Hey everyone, Wes Nagamura from Real Vision in Tokyo. Um, so there's something I just want to flag really quickly um, amidst this wonderful greeting that we've received from markets uh, to start off 2022, um, by which I mean this current sell-off, you know, being led by US tech and the NASDAQ and, and the like. But uh, that would be the Taiwan stock market, the TIEX index. Okay, so here's the deal. So the TIEX has basically been hitting record highs going into 2022, um, you know, along with basically the rest of the world, except for a few indices. The index has basically, it's almost doubled over the past three years. And for those who are unfamiliar, Taiwan, the Taiwan stock market or the Taiwan weighted index, it's much like um, the S&P 500. It's, it's cap weighted. Okay. So therefore it has its heavyweights that get kind of more and more of, you know, index weighting influence as they grow. Right now, one third of the, the index of the, of the market is comprised of three companies, um, and they're all kind of in the semiconductor space. Uh, it's TSMC, MediaTek, and Hanhai, also known as Foxconn. Um, now, TSMC and Hanhai, I'll mention, they actually underperformed the index in 2021, but nonetheless, they command a very big weighting. Now, I bring up Taiwan for two reasons. There's two sides of the coin, actually. There's the bull case to be made, um, that being long Taiwan is the way to play uh, global tech rather than, you know, via the NASDAQ fangs. Um, and the last few days have brought some degree of credibility to that, right? Like, so while the NASDAQ starts a year down some 5% or what have you, um, Taiwan actually started the year, you know, gained like a 2% or so the first few days, and now it's kind of flat for you know for for the month and if you look at like ewt which is the iShares taiwan etf if you went long ewt and short qqq you'd basically see a four and a half percent return on the week a week in which global shares are being hit everywhere basically taiwan's been holding up uh you know and then you have like the fundamental bull case right like semiconductors being long semiconductors i mean you know they this is this is a wide range of like kind of end markets, right? It's it's obviously big data, five G, AI, um, it's fintech, it's uh, medtech, metaverse, crypto, even, um, and and they you know these semiconductor companies they hike prices in twenty twenty one, and you know the benefits of that they're going to be reflected in 2022 earnings. And, and so that's the kind of fundamental bull case and wonderful. Another more important point to make is who is trading Taiwan? And the answer is that it's basically all domestic retail um, in Taiwan. So foreigners were net sellers of Taiwan equities in 2021 by about 20 billion USD notional. Um, and they stayed out of Taiwan on COVID risk and China tension risk and Fed policy um, tightening risk um, and so on and yet the index rallied higher um, and this was largely due to domestic retail investors so you can make the case that foreigners are very underweight taiwan which they are and if they're going to rotate out of u.s tech and they want or need tech or semiconductor exposure long taiwan seems like it has firepower behind it now for the flip side the cautionary warning from me for using, you know, on using this same point, having almost a purely domestic um, retail base that's long Taiwan can be very dangerous for Taiwan uh, and for global equities. So if anyone remembers, back in May of 2021, last year, the TIEX index had this sudden intraday, like 8% plunge, and it hit like limit down. And then it fell like the next two days as well. Like maybe about, I don't know, somewhere around 12%, you know, downside uh, in total over, over a very short period of time. Um, and over this period, we saw the NASDAQ basically plunge about four and a half, five percent 5% as well. Uh, so, the, you know, the, the sell-off in Taiwan certainly impacted global equities and certainly did, did uh, the NASDAQ. Now, why did this happen? This happened because of over-leveraged Taiwan domestic retail trading on margin, getting margin calls and forced liquidations uh, happening at lightning speed. What triggered this downside in TIEX in the first place to get this ball rolling? 
that was triggered by a sort of more benign uh, Nasdaq sell-off that had preceded it. Okay, so, you know, start of uh, May 2021, you see downside in the Nasdaq. And then that seemed to stabilize after, after a few days, but that had actually put into motion this following plunge in Taiwan a few days later, and then that in turn hit NASDAQ again for a second round of sell-offs. So I'm looking at markets right now and I see a pretty similar uh, potential setup. Okay, so we're heading into, you know, this new year with Taiwan uh, domestic retail once again levered long on margin at levels higher than in May of 2021 very bold up okay so like I, I read that like you know you have about something like 12 million trading accounts with an average profit gain an average profit gain of about a million or nearly a million taiwan just like thirty-five thousand us dollars um as of december 2021 on the year it's not bad for an average um average account across you know 12 million trading accounts um and then despite foreign investors selling and having pulled out over the that period average daily turnover or like notional value traded is up 80 percent year over year from 2020 to 2021 so basically you have this domestic levered long index very active um and then you currently have the nasdaq selling off and not just the nasdaq you have the Sox index okay the philadelphia semiconductor index which is also selling off so this is not like uh semiconductors are safe sort of thing um and then at the same time you have the tyx index and this upward surge that basically stopped and start to roll over you know this past week you know albeit relatively less than dm tech but rolling over nonetheless so if the Nasdaq and global equities seem oversold right now, and they see, they start to stabilize in the next day or two or a few days. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean we're all clear. Okay, we need to be vigilant and watch the Taiwan market because this was the setup in May of 2021. The Nasdaq sold off, then seemed to stabilize, but that was not the buy the dip moment as the wheels were, uh, had been put in motion for a second round of downside led by uh, Taiwan retail trading on margin. And if we get another one of these sort of minus 8% limit down days in, in, in Taiwan, and, and you know, that, that translates over to uh, the NASDAQ, we're now looking at you know, a, a NASDAQ with a potential double digit correction, which can then spiral into a NASDAQ bear market in a hurry from that point forward if momentum carries. So um, just something to be aware of that we, you know, if markets stabilize, it's not the buy the dip moment, you know, right off the bat. Um, we just have to keep an eye on these other sort of factors. And because nobody owns, because foreigners don't own um, Taiwanese equities, I'm pretty sure that nobody is looking at this right now. So just something to flag. It might be nothing, but it might turn into um, for, you know, another round of downside. But it doesn't have to be unforeseen downside. All right, so that's it. Uh, good luck out there. See you soon. Thanks.